Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of my Pokemon Battle series, The School of Hard Knocks. So throughout this episode, like every other, we'll be jumping onto the Pokemon Global and Battle Spot ladder, playing under the Championship Battle Rules, which are the equivalent rule set of the VGC 2017 season. So guys, I hope you had a, a really great weekend. I have to firstly apologise for no episode yesterday. So... I, over the weekend, was away, I was travelling, so I didn't have any time to kind of record an episode for yesterday. So, what we'll do this week, we'll do Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and I'll do a bonus one to make up for the one that we didn't do on Saturday this week. So, we'll still have the QR code um, series tomorrow, um, but we'll kind of just make up for that lost episode um, on Saturday, like I said, so I'll not repeat myself again. So guys, over the weekend, there was the um, Sao Paulo um, International Championships. Um, I did put a link, I managed to find a link for the stream. Um, so I did put that in the description of Friday's episode. So I hope some of you guys got to watch that. It was um, very good from all accounts from what I've seen of it. Um, I haven't managed to watch everything yet, but just a big, big congratulations to Ashton Cox for taking the whole thing. Um, he had a very interesting team, um, as always Ashton does, so uh, it was really nice to see him take a big, big major tournament like that um, and kind of just slot his name in where it belongs, so very good. And um, also, congratulations to everyone that got top eight in that tournament and had. hope everyone had a great weekend. Um, we may look at um, some of the teams and things as the week goes on. Um, and like I say, I will keep an eye out for the QR codes as well because if there's any QR codes, especially from Ashton, um, then we can maybe feature that on, on the channel on that little particular series along the line somewhere. But our list is growing good for the QR code series, so you guys are actually like hitting me up with some amazing ideas so we've gotten a nice list going on now so we're going into the next few weeks we have a good few teams lined up so just keep the ideas coming guys if there's stuff you want to see if there's teams that interest you and things like that like I always say just leave them in the comment section below and we'll make that list longer and we'll have loads more content to do so getting on to today's episode though guys we have a brand new team so I didn't have very long to think about this um, we had a request, I think, not last week, the week before, um, for Double Ducks on the channel. So, I didn't have very long on Friday night before I went away and travelled um, to where I was going for the weekend. Um, so, I was kind of thinking, jotting down ideas and thinking of a few things. And um, we'll jump into what I've kind of come up with. Because I'm quite happy with how it is. It looks a bit strange, there's some really odd picks on there. But, I think it'll be quite fun. Because we're just playing it for this week. So, we're only just going to play this team this week. We'll do a team review episode, as we always do with all our teams. Um, and then we'll hit something else next week, starting next week. Because I have a few surprises in store for you guys. So, um, the team review for my Tapu Lele Drip Blim team will be coming out. It's just when I get, kind of get time to catch up with stuff and get that done. But that might take a little bit longer than I anticipated. I did say it would be Monday or Tuesday. But it's probably looking like it'd be more towards the end of this week, over the weekend sometime. Uh, so, guys, so just be a little bit patient because I'm trying to catch up best I can with things so we'll jump in to the battle spot just quickly go over the team it is Pelipper Golduck, Alolan Marowak, Salamence, Metagross and Parasect so as we go through the battles I'll try and explain some of the choices why I've made um, them particular ones on the team so the Marowak is quite obvious because it's got the lightning rod it gives me a fire type as well to hit things like Celesteela quite hard um, and Cortanas and things like that, so that kind of makes sense. We'll go into the rest of it later because we have our first opponent of the day from Dublin, and they are running a team of Porygon 2, Arcanine, Alolan Muck, Araquanid, Metagross, and Tapu Fini. So, how are we going to face up against this? So, basically, as well, with the, with the team that I've got now, we're quite muck weak, so I've put some special techs in there to kind of get around muck, so we've got ways to, to hit that anyway, but. I think what I'm going to do is lead Salamence, Metagross, I'm going to bring Parasect. Do I want to bring Parasect? Or do I want to bring, hmm, because Parasect would be really nice, because Parasect's super slow, so this is my thinking, if a Trick Room goes up, I've got Parasect, um, and I can start spawning things, I can Rage Powder things, I can really help support the rest of the team. 
Um, so it looks like my opponent has got the Porygon 2 Araquanid and the Muck there for the, the Trick Room call. Even Metagross could fit in there. So if the Trick Room goes up and we can get Parasect in, it's going to be very, very useful um, in taking advantage of that Trick Room. So I think I will bring Parasect. And the final question is, do we want to bring Marowak or do we want to bring Pelipper? Hmm. Because at the moment we've not got a lot for the Arcanine and... Well, actually, we might be all right, but I think Pelipper might. Hmm, yeah, I'm going to bring Pelipper. Even though my opponent's got two water-type Pokemon, um, at least Pelipper gives us an option with the Hurricane against the Araquanid, and I think we've got enough between Metagross Salamence and Parasect to deal with like the Tapu Fini side of it. Because I'm running a very interesting Salamence as well. Because I wanted Intimidate support in there, but I already had the Marowak, so I didn't want to put Arcanine in there. Um, I didn't feel like Crocodile really fit on the team very well, and I didn't really want to include Gyarados because it's just doubling up on all the weaknesses and we already have a lot of water types in the team already. So Salamence kind of fit in there quite nicely. Anyway, we'll get into that a bit later. So my opponent leads off with the Porygon 2 and the Metagross. And we lead off with our Salamence and our Metagross. So, hmm. What I'm going to do here is... I'm going to go for a Bulldoze. Hmm. Yeah, because I want a proc. I want a, I'm holding weakness policy on my Metagross. So I want to proc the weakness policy on my Metagross. And I'm just going to go for an Earthquake of my own. So plus two Earthquake from my Metagross should knock out my opponent's Metagross. Um, <clears throat> but we may see, yeah, so my opponent actually withdraws the Metagross. We may see a Trick Room or an Ice Beam come out for that Porygon 2. Uh, Ice Beam obviously under the Salamence. But we just see the Porygon 2 protect. So we're going to get a free Weakness Policy boost, which is really nice. And this next turn will be faster than the Tapu Fini as well, because the nice thing about Clear Body with Metagross is it can't take a drop. Um, because of the, the clear body ability, so it doesn't drop its speed on you, things on your opponent's end. Speed drop, like we see the type of Finny there. So we'll get a weakness policy boost there, and we'll just get a free earthquake off and do some decent damage to this type of Finny as well with our Metagross. Yeah, doing really good damage. And we see the type of Finny is holding the leftovers there. Now. <clears throat> I think this is where my opponent probably sets up the Trick Room. So I'm going to bring in my Parasect for my Salamence. And I'm going to go for a Meteor Mash onto the Tapu Fini. Because that should be enough to pick up the KO there. We don't need to worry too much about the Porygon 2 at this point. So we get the Meteor Mash. It doesn't miss. It has shaky accuracy, so it's not the best. Oh, and we get the... Um, one of the benefits of using Meteor Mash, I think it has a percent each time it's used to um, get a, an attack boost. So we've just got the attack boost there, we've got a weakness policy boost. This Metagross is like supercharged. So anything we're hitting now, it's going to be doing massive damage. So we do take this up with Finny down. My opponent is down one Pokemon. And let's see what he brings in. He does bring in that Metagross though. So. Hmm. I think what I'm going to do is go for a... I'm just going to go for a Spore onto the Porygon 2, and I'm going to go for an Earthquake with my Metagross. Because Parasect should be able to take the Earthquake quite comfortably being a Bug Grass type. Oh, just missed the KO on the Opposing Metagross. Opposing Metagross goes for an Earthquake. This shouldn't KO us. KO us. And we take that, yeah. So that is a super bulky Metagross. And the Porygon too. Oh, I forget that the Misty Terrain's up. Okay. <laughs> idiot, idiot, idiot. So yeah, with Tapu Fini being there, obviously we have to remember that the, um, the Misty Terrain is up, so we can't put anything to sleep while the Misty Terrain's in effect. Fool, fool. So... Because of that, I'm going to go for an Energy Ball on to the Metagross. I'm just going to protect my Metagross this turn from any potential Earthquakes coming out. We should be the slowest thing on the field. I don't know if the Energy Ball will be enough to take out this Metagross. Just enough. Creeps down. So we get rid of the Metagross. 
We have got a few turns of trick room to go through though now. <coughs> hmm. And let's see what my opponent's last Pokemon is. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I wonder if it's the Araquanid. Oh no, it's the Alolomak. Okay. So we do need here. We need to be very careful for the um, the Shadow Sneak because it will be doing a fair bit of damage onto the Metagross. But I am going to go for Rage Powder, and I'm just going to go for an Earthquake with my Metagross. So the Rage Powder should pull everything across from the Porygon 2 and the Muck, and we should be able to get a free Earthquake here. So you just see a knockoff from the Muck into the Parasect. We just hold on, so that's huge. See. Porygon 2, go for the Recover, but that's fine. So if we knock out the Muck here, then we're, we're going to be able to take the game. Get the Earthquake off. We've got plus 3, so this should take it out. Yeah. We do take out our Parasect in the process there, but Parasect did its job there, pulling those attacks away from the Metagross. And now the Misty Train disappears, conveniently. Um... So what have we seen? We've seen Tri Attack and Trick Room. We haven't seen a fourth move on the Porygon 2 yet. I'm going to bring in my Salamence here. And we'll scout out what this, what this Porygon 2 has got as its last move. So we do see that it has the Trace ability as well, so I should have picked up on that at the very start of the match. Um, I'm just going to go for a, a Draco Meteor and a Meteor Mash. Because a P2 has to really... Yeah, so my opponent just forfeits there. So we take that game, and that's not a bad start. And we kind of got to show, like, one of the, like, techs of the team. So that Salamence and the Metagross was something that I kind of came up with and I thought would work really well because the I've got Rock Polish that we've seen on other teams uh, with Metagross, with the Weakness Policy. Um, I think Seijun's team um, had a similar set where you, you kind of activate your weakness policy and rock polish at the same time um, and then you become really threatening straight away and um, you're going to be outspeeding most things in the metagame um, so it's just another way I've got to kind of have a lot of power without bringing the rain every time um, and it's also a good way against things like muck because you can bulldoze with the salamence you're not going to activate the berry on the muck um, and then you're activating your weakness policy and then the earthquake to follow that from your Metagross is going to pick up the Muck KO before it can get a move off. So that was one way around it anyway. Um, the Parasect is really nice. Obviously with the rain, it's got the dry skin ability so it'll heal back health if it's hit with water moves off its rain is in effect on the field. Um, and because of that, so it's got a, like base 30 speed so it's like speed. It speed ties with the Moongus from past format, so it's very slow. So, you know, if a Trick Room goes up, likelihood is it's going to be outspeeding most things under a Trick Room. Um, so you can just spore things whenever you like, as long as Misty Terrain or Electric Terrain aren't up. So that's something we do have to remember. So hopefully we remember that going into these matches. But we have our next opponent, and they are running a team of Aerodactyl, Alolan Muck. Alola Ninetales, Golduck, Pikachu, and Arcanine. So, lots of fun Pokemon on my opponent's team. The Aerodactyl offering super fast, um, speedy rock type attacks. Um, you've got the Pikachu there that has access to Fake Out, obviously, Lightning Rod as well, um, and the Golduck as well. So, it's kind of putting us off bringing our rain mode here. Um, and I think I might just lead with my Salamence and my Metagross again. I'm quite comfortable doing that. Um, I don't know if I need the Rain Mod, to be honest here. Do we need Parasect? Hmm. Let's think. Let's think. Because Golduck might be quite nice, just... Hmm. Although I don't want... I think I might bring Pelipper, and I, I will bring Marowak as well. Just for that Pikachu. Although Marowak's not really doing much outside the Pikachu in the Ninetales. Especially if I bring Rain and he brings his Golduck. It's not the best idea. Hmm. No, I'm going to bring Parasect. I'm going to bring Parasect. 
Because at least with Parasect, I've got the I've got the Rage Powder. So if Pikachu is becoming a problem, I can pull it in and Rage Powder any potential um, electric type attacks onto that, and it resists them. So that's that's kind of a fallback as well to the Marowak sometimes not being needed. So if that Gold Duck does come in, at least we've got that option to kind of deal with that. So my opponent leading off with the Aerodactyl and the Muck. <clears throat> And we'll lead off with our Salamence Metagross. So we might be able to, what I was saying before, we might be able to put that combination into effect now. Uh, where we can go for the Bulldoze. And we can go for the Earthquake. So we can try that. The only problem is if the Muck protects. And then the Aerodactyl goes for um, a Tailwind. But I can't see that happening. Hopefully not, anyway. Muck's not generally sped to kind of make use of Tailwind. So we don't see any Protect come out, we just see a Rock Slide, so as long as we don't get flinched... Wow, that does a huge amount to my Salamence. Yeah, that's a, a massive critical hit. Okay, so we can get the Bulldoze off with our Salamence. We will activate our Weakness Policy with our Metagross. And we need to hope that we don't flinch um, here and we get the Earthquake off. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah, we get the we, yeah, we get the earthquake off. So, like I was saying before, that combination is great for Mux. Obviously, it's a bit risky there in front of an Aerodactyl. There is rock sliding. There's every chance that we could have flinched there and everything could have went wrong because the Muck had attacked there. It was probably into the Metagross slot and it may have picked up the Chaos. So, um, things worked out quite smoothly. Critical hit, obviously, is very unfortunate on the, the Salamence there. So, that is not ideal. But... Not the worst thing in the world. So, my opponent bringing in the Golduck and revealing the Cloud9 ability. So, um, don't want to bring in the Pelipper just yet. So, I'm just I'm going to bring in the Parasect and I'm going to just protect. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to protect my Metagross because I don't want to take a potential Hydro Vortex from this Golduck and it may be coming out this turn. So I'm just going to put it a little bit carefully here, get the Parasect in, um, and then we can we can somehow protect the Metagross from that Golduck, you know, by Rage Powdering those attacks away. Yeah, that crit on the Salamence is really unfortunate, because um, it's going to mean it's probably going to, we're going to have to just bring it in to get the Intimidate and just sack it, really. But, because I wouldn't have thought already even done about 50% damage. So we get the Protect off with our Metagross. See a Rock Slide, another Rock Slide from this Aerodactyl. Let's see what the damage is like to Parasect. It's doing decent damage. I wonder if that is Banded. And a Hydra Pump into that slot as well. So that's actually healing up our Parasect, doing us a massive favour. what I'm going to do now, I'm going to target down that Aerodactyl, because if it, if, it, if it is banded, like we kind of presume it is, we'll be able to just one-shot it, so we don't need to worry about a Sash, and it'll have to keep going for the Rock Slides. I hate Aerodactyl sometimes, because the, just the Rock Slides and the flinch is just so threatening. Like, you get one flinch and it really kind of puts you in such a bad position to kind of get build any momentum. So it is a very good Pokemon for that. So my opponent just deciding on what he wants to do here. <clears throat> Come on. Okay, here we go. So Parasite gets the Rage Powder off. Aerodactyl goes for the Rock Slide again. Doing good damage again. And we've probably seen Ice Beam from the, the Gold Duck this turn. But it is just another Hydro Pump. So, I wonder if that's a choice specs. Or it's choice locked. And we get the Meteor Mash into the Aerodactyl. This should pick up the kill. Yeah, no Sash. So yeah, I would imagine that was probably choice banded. And if that Golduck is locked into um, a particular move, then 
um, is it locked into the hydro pump then then we're, we're sitting pretty nice now because as long as this last po it all depends on the last Pokemon what it is but we're sitting alright at the minute so let's see what my opponent brings in his last Pokemon it's weird as well I built a team around double ducks and we've only featured one duck in both games today so hopefully in tomorrow's episode and the rest of the week we'll be able to feature the Pelipper gold duck combination um, it was quite difficult as well because I think there's a, like one of the very famous um, like double duck cores teams that you've seen is um, by Tommy Cooleen and he's I think top cut like all three in international championships that we've had this season so far with variant rain cores but um, all of them very very good and um, it's hard to kind of deviate away and I wanted to try and stay away from his team um, not because it's not good, it is brilliant um, it's just I wanted to try something a little different but he's kind of built that so good that it's it's difficult to kind of um, get something as successful and I don't think this is going to be but it'll be a lot of fun to play so my opponent brings in the Nine Tails as his last Pokemon um, now we are in a bit of a situation so I could just go for a Rage Powder again we should survive a Blizzard um, and I think I'm going to go for a hmm I'm just going to go for an Earthquake just to break the Sash on the Nine Tails get some damage onto that Golduck So like I say, we should survive the blizzard from the Nine Tails with our Parasect. Parasect actually avoids. That's weird, I thought like blizzard was like 100%. Inhale. Oh, because of the Cloud Nine ability, of course, of course. Yeah. Okay, that makes complete sense. So we get the Earthquake off. That Metagross do really good damage to the Nine Tails and the Golduck. And yeah, we should be able to wrap this game up now because neither Pokemon are going to go down to a Blizzard and as long as we don't get frozen with our Metagross, we should be fine. Yeah, and it looks like that Golduck is kind of locked in. Probably is Specs. But that's done us a huge favour and Parasite showing how good it can be in like certain situations like this. Um, just restoring all that health every turn and just getting hit and pulling those water type attacks into it. And the other thing with Parasect is it's very good um, Gastrodon check. So Gastrodon, as we all know, is like the enemy number one of rain teams. Um, and Parasect does a really good job to kind of really disrupt that and potentially KO when it can. So when it's played right. But it's done a good job today, Parasect. I'm well impressed with it. So we get the Rage Powder off. This should hopefully be the last turn. You see another Blizzard come out from this Nine Tails. It does hit this time. Doing decent damage onto both Metagross and Parasect. And freezes my Parasect. But that Golduck's Hydro Pump handily just healing up all that health. And we'll be able to clean this matchup with this Metagross Earthquake. Yeah, so brilliant. Excellent start to today's episode, really showing that the team can operate without the the primary um, rain mod, and the other bits of the team are starting to work. So that's that's really kind of positive, and I'm I'm actually pleased with how it's went today. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the episode, and um, there've been some really cool games, and we featured some stuff. I think for the first time in a long time that we've had some like really unique things that I've pulled together and I had some ideas that I wanted to pull together so the Salamence is really interesting because it's a salt vest Salamence and it sounds a bit weird putting in a salt vest on Salamence but I wanted the bulldoze um, and one problem with Salamence is you know you can't freely just have it sitting in front of like Tapu Koko um, it doesn't gleam's going to be doing so much damage to it or Tapu Lele um, or Tapu Fini um, all three of those like pressure it so hard with their special type attacks so I was doing some calculations quick calculations with it and I, I, I like I kind of figured out a spread 
that allows you to survive a Twinkle Tackle from um, a Tapu Koko, allows you to survive a Moon Blast from Tapu Lele, uh, Specs Moon Blast from Tapu Fini, so it's really strong. And just being able to survive allows you to kind of cycle those Intimidates a bit more, get those attacks off where you need to. Um, and the other thing is, um, I wanted um, a really good tech against um, Cortana because Cortana can just sit in front of a rain team most times, do huge damage with those leaf blades and you're not really hitting it super effectively um, with those water type attacks. Now I know Pelipper can hit it for decent damage with the Hurricane, but you can't always rely on that 100% um, of the time, whereas the Salamence can come in on any of its attacks um, get the Intimidate off and it threatens it as well with the Flamethrower. So I felt like the the Assault Vest was a bit of a, um, it was really experimental sort of, like sort of item, but I thought like I'll give it a go. I like Assault Vest and I like putting on Wacky Mons and seeing what I can do with it. So I think it actually works really well. And it's another form of speed control with a Bulldoze. So it's it's very good utility Pokemon. It's got the Draco Meteor for uh, Garchomps and things like that as well. So it's very good and obviously that that um, ground immunity that you kind of always want to have in the team as well, alongside the Pelipper. So yeah, I do feel like it's um, a good start. So what we'll do, guys, we'll leave that here. If you've enjoyed the episode, please leave a like on the video. It's massively appreciated. If you're not subscribed to the channel, do so. So you get all the daily updates for when the School of Hard Next Nox episodes come out, as well as the QR code series. Um, episodes and the team review episodes. Like I say, we're going to have a team review episode of the Tapalele Drift Blim team, but that'll probably be towards the end of the week over the weekend. We'll be back tomorrow with another episode of the School of Hard Knocks playing this really fun team and another QR code episode tomorrow, so stay tuned for that. And um, I'll let you go, guys. So thank you as always for um, tuning in. It's absolutely my pleasure, as always, having you guys here. Um, and all the comments and things, you're just, just amazing. And yeah. You know, you know, guys, art goes out too. <laughs> but yeah, go away, guys. Have a great night. I will see you tomorrow. Whatever you're doing, take care of yourselves. And until then, I will see you then. So, bye bye.